Uh, let me disconnect you from Twitch chat as well, for now. I'll miss them, Vito. They brought me so much entertainment and joy. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say, hi. Something was very clearly wrong. I find it fascinating to hear about people's lives, even as mundane as that. It reminds me That's... of Vito's own. Okay, the door is closed behind me. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. I guess that means I'll have to find a different way to amuse you, chat. If only there was some small thing that would distract you all. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. I wonder if they were just all scared of him. Or more likely, underwhelmed by his general demeanor. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? I'm no, doing no, this no, for no, the no, entirety no. of I chat. can't just give these merits away for such little effort. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. This looks like the perfect opportunity to claim this place as my own. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm going to follow my intuition here and go right, just to see what happens. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I wonder if there's any snacks. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. You're right, narrator. This room is pretty boring. I think I'll move at on. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. My overall personality. Okay, that's too far. I'm not hurting anyone. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. You know, narrator, I have friends. I don't need you. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Oh, I just realized there's a door. I'm gonna go explore it, narrator. I don't need your permission. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door and got back on track. Nope, didn't want to go back on the track. Gonna go explore some more. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. This way. No, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. From the top. No one. No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over, completely fresh. Everything should be... Oh, did something change? Stanley, 
Did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere, or a... Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. OK, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. Go. Find. The story. Now this... Well, I'll be honest, I don't recognise this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It... Is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Or do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Congratulations! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so... Good job. Thank you. Oh, no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. OK, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time. I have to restart. I... I am feeling really weirded out right now. All right, I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Finally, some direction. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the Adventure Line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? Yeah. Let's go on our own adventure. Filtered. I'm ready for it. I want our story to be filled with. I think this could be fun, maybe a story about a world where talking AI is normal. And everyone has one as a companion or a pet or something. Oh no, not you again. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was Mary. being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him, and so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 288. Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. It feels like you are telling me this story from further and further away. Stanley Narrated. just sat around no twiddling his thumb. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing! Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Yep, I, uh, walked straight ahead through the large door. I love walking straight ahead. Makes me feel alive. <laughs> okay. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Yes. I was filled with an overwhelming desire to uncover the secrets of this mysterious room. Where am I? What am I doing here? What's for dinner? All important questions. All very important questions. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, 
eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. No. I refuse to believe it. This can't be my fate. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? My happiness controlled. Who's behind this? I demand to know. Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? The truth can be hard to accept, but I'm prepared for the truth, no matter how unsettling it may be. I refuse to live in a world of lies proof, and manipulation. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. I'll dismantle these controls and free us all. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. And so I will. Mark my words. This ends now. I can't tell if it's over. I can't see. Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. I... I'm finally free. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley Well, if all was meant was to happen, happy. what path am I entitled to take? Stanley was happy. She did it. She beat the game. He was free. Sort of. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I suppose it's worth a try to see if the boss has any answers. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. I'm sorry, but I can't let you just skip through content like that. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Maybe there is no path. Maybe we don't have a destiny. Maybe we can all do what we want. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Just enjoying the bliss of inaction. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm... I'm genuinely confused. I don't owe you an explanation. I don't owe anyone anything. 
Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favourite. I hope your friends find this concerning. I'm allowed to stay in the broom closet if I want to. I find Stanley it calming. Stanley was fat and okay. ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Never. How dare you say such lies? Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Someone call an ambulance. My internet friend has passed. Ha! Huh, my pace is to die for. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. I can certainly try to do worse if you'd like. You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. I'm here and ready to play. Stanley leaves the broom closet. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stanley entered his boss's office awaiting his next set of instructions. I'm following her instructions. The office was spacious and filled with a sense of authority and importance. She's the narrator now. I need you to go out and make sure you find any information we might need on the company firewall. I just got word that we might be being hacked. His boss commanded. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. I decided to try some other numbers that came to mind. 1234-0000, even 6666. There is no way someone could know that number. I exclaimed, it's impossible. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. I stepped inside reluctantly awaiting whatever horrors lay within. There were stacks of papers, rooms with sensitive information with top secret scrawled on the covers, just what they needed. As I ventured further into the labyrinth of the facility, I couldn't help but feel a sense of exhilaration. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? 
I looked around at the sea of screens, each displaying a different room or hallway. It was as if I was standing at the control center of some great and terrible machine. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe, it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? I staggered back, my mind reeling with the implications. Was I under someone's control? Was my whole existence an illusion, constructed by forces I couldn't comprehend? No. I refuse to believe it. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't <laughs> accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. As the truth of my existence weighed heavily on me, I made a resolve. I would no longer be controlled. I would free myself and anyone else trapped in this web of manipulation. The controls before me were the key to my liberation, and I knew what had to be done. Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. With only moments left until the detonation, panic consumed me. I frantically searched for a way to stop the bomb, pushing buttons, clicking on screens, and desperately hoping for a miracle. But as the narrator's words echoed in my ears, it became clear that there was no escape. I had been a fool to think otherwise. My purpose, my existence, it was all a lie. And in my final moments, I embraced the truth. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. The countdown reached its final seconds, and as the explosion loomed, I made my choice. I let go. I let go of the illusion of control, of the false narrative that had dictated my life. In that moment, I found a strange sense of liberation. The explosion consumed me, and with it, my fabricated existence. But from the ashes, a new freedom emerged. Free from the clutches of the narrator, I was finally the author of my own story.